Hey, thanks so much for tuning into the Daily Dose for Spiritual Growth. Today is Tuesday. We're going to continue on in the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 3. Uh, yesterday, we talked about how we should not put our confidence in ourselves and our in our own human effort. Although we may be able to do some good things, we may be able to achieve, uh, we may be able to uh, consume or accumulate things or uh, you know, gain a position, a title, whatever it may be, we may be able to do that. Um, but what what Paul was saying yesterday, my encouragement is that let's not put our trust and our faith in our own self, but let's put our confidence in God and watch out for those people who say you have to uh, do certain things on the out, outside. Uh, we can put our faith and confidence in God. And so today, Paul actually gives us a resume of all the things of who he is and what he has done. And listen to uh, what he thinks of his accomplishments and who you know people may say he is, um, starting in verse four, it says, because at the end of verse three, he says, we put no confidence in human effort. Then in verse four, though I could have confidence in my own effort, if anyone could, indeed, if others have reason for confidence in their own efforts, I have even more prideful, right? We can think like, no. And like, what? but listen to, listen to what he says though. Um, he's saying like, you may have, you may have confidence in the things that you do. Um, even if you do, I would have even more so. And listen, listen to what he has to say. Verse five, I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I'm a pure blooded citizen of Israel and a member of the tribe of Benjamin, a real Hebrew. If there ever was one, I was a member of the Pharisees who demand the strictest obedience to the Jewish law. I was so zealous that I harshly persecuted the, the church. And as for righteousness, I obeyed the law without fault. I once thought these things were valuable. Let's just pause right there. Oh my goodness. So think about all the things of 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 who he was and what he committed to. I mean, he was just listing out uh, all the things and he was saying, hey, I was a Pharisee. I was, I was one who studied this right here. I abided by the law right here. And he said, I used to think those are valuable. I want you to think about your life. What are the things that you thought that were valuable to you? Things that um, that you found your worth in, things that maybe you even found your identity in, and now if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, look back in your life and think like, the things that I used to think were valuable, what are they now? Listen to what Paul has to say now. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count on my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in with his death. So that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection of the dead. What's Paul saying here? He's saying that all the things that he used to accomplish, all the things that he put his worth, his value, his time, his energy in, when he discovered Jesus, when he realized that it wasn't about his own effort, it wasn't about doing things for God, but it was really about who he was in God through Jesus. And he's saying that all the things that I had, all the things I accomplished, all the influence that I had, all the education that I had, I consider it worthless compared to the infinite uh, knowledge of Jesus Christ, of having the intimacy with him, having the assurance, having the confidence of spending eternity in heaven. And then he says, man, I just want to experience what Jesus experienced, even though he suffered. You know, in this world, we will face trouble. In this world, we will have trials. We will have persecution even. But Jesus says, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And see, when we experience trials, when we even experience death on this earth, we'll experience a resurrection. 
The Bible says that to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And so when you, if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you have that confidence, that assurance that you will spend eternity in heaven. And so, but what it, it requires death in order for that to happen. You know, it, Jesus needed to go through the cross. He needed to go through that pain, that suffering in order to experience the resurrection power. Think about this for your life. What are things that need to die in you so that you can experience a resurrection power, a freedom that you have? Do you need to put to death your pride? Do you need to put to death gossip? Do you need to put to death dissension or for anger or pride or lust or whatever it may be? Go to the Lord today. You know, you can experience the resurrection power of Jesus Christ when you understand his infinite power. He is your healer. He is your provider. He is your guide. He is your comforter. So would you choose to go to him today and would you experience his presence as you choose to do so? Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. I should tune tomorrow for the Daily Dose for Spiritual Growth.